Hey everyone, welcome to the second part of Solution Equilibria. In this video, we'll look at solubility product constant, KSP. Since their solutions of ionic compounds are reversible reactions, they also have equilibrium constants. In this case, this is the solubility product constant, KSP. As a reminder, the equilibrium constant expression is the concentrations of products divided by the concentration of reactants. However, in the case of solubility product constant, solids are not included in expression because the concentrations remain relatively constant during dissolution. As a result, the expression for KSP is simply in terms of the solutes or the ions that have dissolved already. The concentrations in the solubility product constant are concentrations of aqueous ions at equilibrium. When the reaction is at a dynamic equilibrium, the rate at which the solid dissolves to produce ions equals the rate at which the dissolved ions recombine to form the precipitate. The reverse reaction through which the precipitate is produced is called crystallization or precipitation. Since crystallization occurs at equilibrium, the formation of precipitate is usually a good qualitative indicator of a dissolution reaction reaching equilibrium. What's interesting about a dissolution reaction compared to equilibrium systems discussed previously is that the amount of solid does not disturb a reaction at equilibrium. In other words, when a precipitate has already formed, adding more solids will not increase the amount of ion dissolved, so the concentrations of ions are unchanged. The most important implication of this is that equilibrium concentrations of ions are the highest they can be. Therefore, when a dissolution reaction reaches equilibrium, it also reaches what's known as a saturated state, where no more ions can be dissolved. As you will see very soon, the solubility product constant, KSP, is useful in that it provides us the highest concentration of ions possible for a given ionic compound. Since KSP depends on the concentration of ions, it can be quickly used to determine whether an ionic compound is soluble or not. The general rule is that ionic compounds with larger KSP values are more soluble, and the ones with smaller KSP values are less soluble. It is important to note that KSP values are provided in the NESA data sheet. And thus, exam questions usually do not pr provide them, nor prompt you to find them in the data sheets. In addition, all KSP values provided are relatively small, as they are all for either sparingly soluble or insoluble ionic compounds. This fact can be quite useful if you forget your solubility rules, as all KSP values of soluble compounds, such as sodium chloride, are not given in the NASA data sheets. The main concept solution equilibria revolve around is the solubility of ionic compounds. The term solubility simply refers to the maximum amount of ionic compound that can dissolve in a given volume of solvent without producing a precipitate. Apart from comparing solubility of various ionic compounds, KSP values can also be used to precisely calculate their solubility. The steps taken to calculate solubility are generally the same for every ionic compound. Firstly, write a balanced chemical equation and solubility product expression to represent the dissolution of the compound. To make things simple, we'll use the dissolution of lead iodide as our example again. So here, the ratio between lead iodide and lead ions as well as iodide ions is 1 to 1 and 1 to 2 respectively. And as a result, the KSP value will be the concentration of lead multiplied by the concentrations of iodide squared. And of course, both concentrations must be moles per litre. The next step is to use a bit of algebra and let S be the solubility of the ionic compound, that is lead iodide in this case. Using the equation, if S stands for the maximum concentration of lead iodide that can dissolve without producing any precipitate, then the concentrations of the ions, so lead ion and iodide ion, can therefore be derived in terms of S and based on their stoichiometric ratios as outlined by the equation above. In this case, it is S for lead due to the 1 to 1 ratio, 
and 2s for iodide concentration due to the 1 to 2 ratio between lead iodide and iodide ions. The concentrations of ions cannot be replaced by the numeral S. At the same time, the KSP of lead iodide can be found from the data sheet. This allows us to rearrange the equation to find the value of S, which is the solubility of lead iodide in moles per liter. As for calculations, the most important part to recognize and understand is that writing a correct balanced chemical equation is everything. This is because the equation used to find S, solubility, depends on the stoichiometric ratio between the ionic compound and ions. Here are three examples you may come across. If the ions are both in one-to-one -one ratio with the ionic compound itself, then the KSP will be S squared. If the ratio is one-to-one -one for one ion, but one-to-two for the other ion, then the expression will be KSP equals to 4S cubed. If the ratio is one-to-one -one and one-to-three for the two ions respectively, the expression becomes 27 S to power 4. Here are some more examples using specific ionic compounds. While KSP values of many ionic compounds are provided in the data sheets, you can still be asked to calculate them using solubility values given by the question. Here's an example. At 25 degrees Celsius, the solubility of lead fluoride is found to be 0.64 grams per liter. Calculate the KSP of lead fluoride. The first step is to convert the given solubility from grams per liter into moles per liter. And this is by dividing by the molar mass of lead fluoride, which gives us 0.0026 mole per liter. The second step is again to write out a balanced chemical equation to represent the dissolution of lead fluoride. Using the molar ratio in the equation, we can again derive the concentrations of lead and fluoride ions in terms of the solubility we just found. In step number three, we can write the KSP expression and subsequently substitute the concentrations of lead and fluoride ions in terms of the solubility of lead fluoride. So for lead, this will be the same number, and for fluoride, it will be double the solubility of lead fluoride. This will give us the KSP value as asked by the question. While solubility product constant is calculated using concentrations of ions at equilibrium, that is at saturation, solubility quotient, which is QSP, is calculated using non-equilibrium concentrations. So the concentrations of the ions when the reaction is not at equilibrium. Since ion concentrations are the greatest at equilibrium, when concentrations of ions are greater than equilibrium concentrations, a precipitate will form. In other words, when the calculated reaction quotient Q is greater than the KSP of an ion compound, precipitation occurs. Conversely, if ion concentrations are less than the concentrations at equilibrium, a solution has not reached a saturated state, so more ions can dissolve without producing a precipitate. So if the calculated Q value, so the quotient, is less than the KSP of an ion compound, precipitation does not occur as more ions can dissolve. Let's see how we can apply this idea. 0.025 moles of silver chloride is added to 1 litre of water. So we're given the amount of moles of silver chloride and also the volume of water. Determine whether a precipitate is produced. The first step is to write a balanced chemical equation for the dissolution and a Q expression for the ionic compound. The second step is to determine the Q value, but before we can do so, we have to calculate the concentration of silver chloride. This is done by dividing the number of moles of silver chloride by the volume of water in liters. Now, going back to the equation, which gives us a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio between the compound and the two ions it dissociates into. The ratio here tells us that the concentration of silver chloride equals to the concentrations of silver ion as well as chloride ion, which both were equal to 0.0250 mole per liter. This number can then be substituted into my Q expression, as you can see here, which gives us a Q value. And our third step here is to compare the Q value that we calculated with the KSP value, so the solubility product constant. Since the Q value is greater than the KSP value, as we discussed, precipitate will form as the solution is already saturated. 